Hey, welcome to the Exit Only Theater Podcast. Today, we are talking James Bond. <laughs> yes, we are. And, uh, yeah, we're talking about Spectre. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be reviewing Spectre. We're going to kind of, we're, we're gonna break it down. We're going to kind of pick our favorite parts and obviously the, the not-so-favorite this, parts. This energy level may or may not dictate how he feels about the yeah. film. <laughs> We're gonna pick our uh, we're gonna pick our most memorable parts of the movie, and then mm-hmm. we're also to launch and saying where do we see the Bond franchise going from here? Is Daniel Craig coming back? No. Is, do we wish Sam Mendes would come back? You know, do we'll we get into that. do we want Adele we'll coming back? <laughs> That's the real that question. Is a definite yes. But the writing's on the wall here. Oh no, uh, Sam Smith. Oh no. Yeah. We may or may not launch into falsetto just but like sporadically. Get into it. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're gonna kick this off by I just, first. I might just cut the first minute and start yeah. there. <laughs> it's like, you're just gonna be like, "Hey, welcome to the Brother Row." <laughs> Running on the wall, and then yeah. keep going. Well, all right, so we're gonna get this thing kicked off. Mm-hmm. All right, so first, we're gonna start with the Vegas of discussion. Spectre, initial reaction. JP Lee, the world is waiting. <laughs> the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> um, I. I, I hated the first 45 minutes of this movie, mm-hmm. but I almost forgive the first 45 minutes for how much I enjoyed the last two hours. And yes, the movie's almost three hours long. It's like two and a half, 2.40, I think. It was... Uh, it's bloated. So, like, it's roughly like 2.45, right? It's a bloated movie. It's uh, it's about 2.45 too long, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I will allow you to, to yeah. elaborate. Just, it, like, this is the thing. I didn't hate the movie. Mm-hmm. Walking out, I was like, I didn't hate it. But at the same time, to me, it felt like a very forced Bond movie from everybody involved. From Sam Mendes and especially Daniel Craig. Like, they they did they did the best with the effort they put forth. <laughs> Which is a good thing you say, say it that way because there was a moment about an hour and 10, 15 minutes into the movie. I remember that exact moment. I think it was the rat scene. It was a pretty much when I was like, oh, yeah. oh, they don't care anymore. Okay, fine. Then I don't care. We'll just enjoy it. Like, yeah. I feel like there's a moment in the film, and if you haven't seen it yet, just remember us when you see the rat mm-hmm. sequence. It is a very, like, almost fourth wall breaking scene where you're like, what? What is happening right yeah. now? Am I watching a YouTube video? Like, what? Maybe the writing was on the wall. <laughs> the writing what? was all over the place, but mm. not condensed on the page the right way. See, I felt that way when I saw the Monica Bellucci when James the Bond... Unnecessary the unnecessary... unnecessary, random, we're gonna get it on, <laughs> post-funeral style. You know what? I know that people give that scene crap, and it they, rightfully so. It, it doesn't it doesn't have a place Any in other it. woman, I would have given it more crap. That's but Monica thing. Bellucci was just like, you know what, man? You know, I would have made a move too. It, right. You and know, it's, it's something refreshing that yes, that sequence like everyone's just even I'm like, oh, she's awesome. Yeah. But she's also age appropriate. It's like the first age appropriate woman he's bedded in the entire like franchise. No, like, he bedded the hell out of her. Yeah. yeah. Or mirrored. I don't know what you could call it, but yeah, no. But mm. that's what I'm saying is like as inappropriate as that sequence was, and it was forced, and like yeah. all of a sudden his like interrogation style is to just dress her, which is very Bond esque. I, I liked that she was like two years older than Daniel the Craig. Scene, like, no, you. <laughs> the scene was as forced as Bond forcing himself on Monica Bellucci. It's oh. just like, he walks in, I'm going to interrogate you, lip on lip. And I'm just like, you know what? It's time to conduct my next interview. You know what that you reminded know? me of, though? Is there's a movie um, called Notorious. It's a Hitchcock film where mm. to skirt the, the ratings, he, uh, Cary Grant, and, and I think it was, um, oh my God, who was it? It was Cary Grant, and it'll come to me in a second. I will look. I, I know exactly who it is, but I can't remember who it is. I'm researching. Click, 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 click. click, click. I think it's, click. it was a... Click, Ingrid click. Bergman. In- Ingrid Bergman. It's Ingrid Bergman. But double check anyway. So when the two of them are in a sequence together, and they're kind of lusting for each other, they embrace, but they won't kiss for like six minutes. She's right. Yes! <laughs> I just I had to brain fart for ten seconds. 1946 it. film. It, it's one of those things where like, the, he didn't want to get a bad rating, so he just like made them embrace and almost kiss for like six minutes, and I kind of liked that reference to it, because I know so that's a very iconic photo that he's I'm showing right now. I'm showing a right photo now. of them <laughs> lazily kissing. <laughs> it's like, in, well, in the 40s. It's that, a good I mean, Tuesday that's night a passionate for me. embrace yeah. in the 40s. <laughs> but knowing Sam Mendes, I know he absolutely has seen that film, so it was kind of a cool reference to it. But I see what you mean, that that sequence was yeah. fairly Speaking unnecessary. Speaking of seeing films, 
you know, yes. Sam Mendes, like, when you watch this film, it's very Roger Moore, like, where it's very, like, uh-huh. old school, like, hey, Mish Money Pushy, you know, <laughs> it's like, you're gonna come with me, and there's nothing you could say. But there's something in what he's saying versus, like, Daniel Craig has a lot of dead eye in this movie when oh, he's yeah. saying that, but he just doesn't look like he gives a flying F no, at all. He's just like, I'm here to collect a check, my lady. <laughs> Basically, for two and a half hours. It's like, you collect that check, Craig. He looks, you I mean, he looks great doing it. it, and I don't mean to be that stereotypical, but it's true. He looks like a catalog model the entire yeah. film. I and that's how why... he's carrying those clothes on trains and planes and everything, but whatever, it's James Bond. Hey, it's a Tom Ford suit, man. Make anybody <laughs> look dapper. <laughs> like, I could just roll in with bedhead. And like, just be like, I got a time for a suit on. It's like, oh, that's so edgy. Exactly. Yeah. It's <laughs> exactly. just like, you know what? I need that. I actually need a new suit. But, yeah. sure. but, the, but those but. little touches of classic Bond-esque superficiality, I kind of liked. Yeah. I don't but know why. I think, and moving on to like the, I guess like the more in-depth analysis of the, the, the movie. I'll allow us to elaborate. Then, prepare yourselves oh, yes. for an in-depth discussion. Um, <laughs> we don't um, it Spectra. <laughs> Uh, the broken glass James Bond movie. Um, no, but like I, I think for me the reason I one of the reasons why I didn't enjoy it as much is because Sam Mendes directed Skyfall, right? Which a lot of people loved. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was as I was I didn't think it was as good as people made it out to be. But I did enjoy. It. I knew it was ambitious visually. Are you more of a Casino Royale fan? Than yes. Okay. And Worth um, I feel like I'm gonna get shit for that later. No, no, no. People, <laughs> people do like Casino. Royale, I think that sure. Casino Royale was the perfect balance mm-hmm. of 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 style and action for me, and I was just like, that's a, a James Bond movie that I've yet never seen before. Yeah. And I was like, I really dug that, and that's what made Daniel Craig a star in my eyes. Yeah. But for sure. but like going back to the point was that James Bond, like, well not James Bond, but like Sam Mendes did Skyfall, mm-hmm. and in that style it was very very I guess. It was very minimalized. Even though there was a lot of big action sequence, Mm -hmm. the actual conflict was very. It took place technically online. They were trying to find data. They were trying to find all this stuff, and there was like there was legitimate, I guess, uh, relevant storylines to what's going on with the world today. And I was Mm -hmm. like, hey, there's a lot of meat to this. This is really interesting. It it brought James Bond into the real world instead of just like in the movie. They said like it's not backdoor espionage anymore. This is like it's going to be out in the open now. Yeah. Um. Then when you transition to this Bond. The style is completely different. Mm-hmm. The the tone of the story is completely different. The yep. the type of story is completely different. The James Bond that we see Daniel Craig play completely different. You do have and, it feels like you have four completely different movies. Yeah, and it's very disjointed. And it's very it, it was like that's why if, to me I'm like I I'm not mad at it because it's like okay you know you did what that was the story you did and you're like you know what, that's gonna work for the film that we have planned. Yeah. But at the same time it's like you know it'd be like Christopher Nolan doing. You know, Dark Knight, then doing Batman Forever, like it's just <laughs> yeah. like, like what? Okay, but it's like how did that happen? Did like where was the the where did the writers go? Yeah, there's merit. Here? There's merit for both films, but when you set the bar so high on one, you can't just completely be so tangential the second the next time around. Yeah, you know? and that, and like my, I, and like to finish like the argument I made, and I know we talked about it before the mm-hmm. show. It was that we and my I think we both agree that. You could tell this was a forced last movie for Sam Mendes and Daniel Craig. It did feel like because it. Because there were already reports like when, after Skyfall, people were really excited. It's like, hey, do you have to do another one? And Sam Mendes like, nah, you know, we'll mm-hmm. see. You know, if the right story comes along. All of a sudden, he's just like, really, it felt like last minute because they started shooting this, I want to say, beginning of the year, and they wrapped up in like July. And, and given, this movie came out. where no. they had to go to shoot all these sequences, it's pretty... it was pretty quick. And you're just like, a lot of people were like, well, that's James Bond. I'm like, well, we'll see. And you could kind of tell that this was a movie that they just wanted to get in the can and it's hopefully fun. make their money back. But I mean, I, they made 70, but apparently that's lower than they expected. In America, yeah. Yeah, in America. Exactly. And overseas, they're going to oh, keep making money. In Britain, it's destroyed. I didn't, think, yeah. I didn't think that many people went to the movies out there. And there's they've made, like, what, two, almost $200 million They did. The they broke weeks. a lot of... They broke Skyfall's record. Um, <laughs> Absurd. But yeah, like, just, so to wrap up my point, I just think it was very strange for them to go from one style to another. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's unfortunate because, you know, I would have liked to have seen Daniel Craig go out on a higher note. A lot of people, you know think the opposite of what I think. They think that they went out yeah. the way he should have went out. And I'm like, you know what? That's cool, but you could totally tell by the end of the movie that both of those guys are not coming back. I was gonna say, I, there's speculation as this film finally hit theaters. Like, as it was building up, everyone was feeling like Daniel, Daniel Craig's not coming back. He's not coming back. He's been kind of poo-pooing the franchise. Poo-pooing, very, suicidal poo-poo. Very often, yeah, yeah. More often than I would expect someone who's had this much influence on this franchise yeah. would say, but... As the films have come out, as the films come out, the last couple of days, it's he's sort of gotten softer on his hardline toward that. So I feel yeah. like there's a there's a small door opening for him to return. 
but I feel like the script has to be really I hope it has to, to like, the one thing I've always wanted to see was a cameo to transition to the next Bond hmm. did you just always it was just like oh here's the next Bond I'm but, like I would love to see a handoff I, like, I know it's like I know it's, that's just me I, that's not like I found it on anything I just I think it would be really cool because I feel like James Bond is is more of a cover name and the 007 title is just like whatever true but then you also have like I don't know. I feel like the worlds within the, that they exist. Yes, they're they're perceived to be the same, but they're also it feels almost rebootish when you get a new set of director and stuff. So I feel like unless you have someone who's willing to hand off from Sam Mendes' vision, whether or not you agree with how they left it, yeah, it feels kind of weird. I don't know if you could do like a hey, hello seven, hello seven. Like, could you um, could you have them look at each it's other? Like, like, like Nick Fury comes out of nowhere, very face offy. Like... like I don't know if they could really stand and stare at each other and be like hello. I just I think know. I just think it'd be really cool to do like a, a, like a Nick Furious thing where they they cut like the James Bond like the current James Bond let's say Daniel Craig comes up and he's like you know, I'm James Bond and I'm here to approach you about the 007 initiative and it's just like damn that'd be fucking cool because I mean there's the it's like the double O's yes yeah, so you could have another double O yeah, when I heard like in the like movie double nine or that's yeah, the thing, exactly. I thought I was like wait a second do they already have another Bond in here whoever's already? lined up to yeah the role. and then that like, would be cool that's what I was expect I, I when I heard that I'm like wait a second are we gonna see a different double O which we've never I don't think we've ever seen I mean not not in the films I grew up with I can't speak to the older ones and that's yeah. actually a point I wanted to bring up the reason why I forgive this movie a lot more than and I think maybe I should. It should be a priest. <laughs> that, I'm very forgiving of a lot of a lot of movies. I feel like I'm like this is so hard to do. Like go you. Um, but <laughs> Fantastic I, Four. It, well, see, I didn't I didn't waste my money on that. So case in point, don't waste your money. Not, not yet, me. you have. Follow me. Not yet, you have. <laughs> um, the, the thing I, I guess the, the point I'm trying to bring up is that I grew up. I didn't really grow up with Bond mm -hmm. specifically. I grew you grew up, up with James. <laughs> no, I grew up with Austin Powers. Yeah. And this movie, because it's such an homage to the earlier films with, you know, the villain yeah. and the villain's, you know, sidekick m muscle and just the, the scar that appears on his face. Like, you're seeing the homage to his pr the earlier bad guys. Yeah. For me, I just saw, oh, yeah, that's a reference to the movie that Austin Powers is referencing. So for me, I, I almost just kind of bought into the the shtick of it all because I appreciated a movie that was seriously made to be shticky yeah. in reference to something that I grew up watching without any context of the previous stuff. So I, yeah. it was weird. I got this almost like a reverse effect where people watched Austin Powers because it reminded them of previous Bond films. I'd never watched previous Bond films as a kid. That's yeah. not the kind of movies my parents would show me yeah. for whatever reason. So for me, I grew up with Bond, with Powers, so now I'm seeing these films, and it's like, I can't take them seriously, except for maybe Skyfall. I've never taken Bond seriously, because I've seen him spoofed yeah. four, three or four times. So for me, I don't know, I kind of liked that they were just like, all right, this world is so archaic, let's just yeah. let's just make a sticky 60s movie. And that's what we got, and it was kind of fun. And with that kind of, and like, um, based on your point, that's why I respect Skyfall, uh -huh. uh, not Skyfall, uh, uh, Casino Royale so much, because sure. it was... Because I grew up watching like Tomorrow Never Dies, uh, the Pierce Brosnan, yeah, the like Pierce classics, Brosnan. Yeah. Those were those <laughs> yeah. were my favorite. I was obviously everybody played Goldeneye on their N sixty four, and it was like, man, this is really cool. Then obviously Austin Powers came out, and you're like, oh, we get it. Those were the old lame James Bonds that came out in right. the sixties. Like, oh, well, we get it. But then like when Casino Royale came out, it kind of literally just forced to me like watching that. I was like, it forced the Austin Powers stuff to shut up finally because yeah. it was the first oh, time. True. It was like. It, ref I, it refused to follow that template. Yeah, and like to go back to the Dark Knight like example, it was the first time we saw a Batman like in his suit. Mm -hmm. where it was like it was actually tactical and practical, where it would make sense like that's somebody sure. who would fight with armored gear like that. So when I saw James Bond in Casino Royale and Daniel Craig, it was like physically, I was like, that's what I think James Bond would look like in real life. It makes sense that someone would be physically tough and chiseled and, you know, kind of scruffy. Exactly. But I think also, case in point, is that that was 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. That was 2005. That's, I'm a, that's the hero we needed back then. Yeah. I feel like coming full circle, nowadays there's a lot of tongue-in-cheek humor, and I don't know if that was intentional for this film, but I I rode along, for I, I went along for this ride because I, I maybe, the, maybe not all the yeah. audience wanted it, but I as an audience member was okay with yeah. The sort of self-referential turning the mirror and you kind of point and laugh they, kind of thing. I don't know. They went. I'm not gonna say the safe route because there were a lot of risky things they did do in the movie. But I will say they did go the popcorn route. Where like, if we're gonna make a movie, yeah. it has to be something where people are gonna remember certain things and have a good time. It and definitely I was me, safe. It and was we safe. did have a good time watching yeah. the movie. Like there were obviously 
you know, there were like my favorite sequence was the train sequence I'm with Dave them. Batista. Yeah. And I thought that scene, like when it happened, you know, albeit you know pacing wise, it just was like, all right, they kind of forced that in there. But when it happened, you were just like, yes. Yeah. Even they, even yes. his reveal and the reflection of the glasses is awesome. I I just liked that it was they went making another Dark Knight reference because okay. like because Sam it's Mendes a good parallel. because Sam Mendes always like nikes knowing that like for instance Skyfall was totally he says like the Dark Knight was a huge influence on that movie. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I think Dark Knight Rises was an, a somewhat of an influence on this one as from Dave Bautista's role because there was someone who could physically take on yeah. Bond, mm -hmm. at least Daniel Craig's Bond, for the first time in the series. And he got baned out, where he got beat the hell up. And you thought he was literally going to get thrown off this train. And mm -hmm. then, of course, you know... Good timing, Lisa. Do hey, well, at least at <laughs> thank least, God for kegs. At least he didn't just go get his back magically fixed for a couple of weeks. Like yeah, I mean, right. there's, there's some plot problems in both films. Oh right? yeah, no doubt about it. But I, you know, the one thing that I wanted to say, like to transition to the things that we really liked about the movie. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the train sequence was one, but yeah. also Dave Bautista as a whole was really nice because. He's someone who is a career ever since Guardians of the Galaxy came out, and I, I, watching those interviews with him, mm -hmm. you could tell like in those interviews he's like, "Man, I really want to be an actor. I I don't want to be a movie star. I really want to be a character actor." And, and like when he got this role, I was like, "I'm curious to see how he could yeah. do." Not because it's a big budget movie, but it was just like this is this is a legitimate part in a James Bond franchise, and yeah. you're a villain. You you mean as much as James Bond does, and you mean as much as the other villain. The other villain is more the mental threat. You yeah. need someone who's physically going to harm yeah. you, so it's it's important. And I would say like he gave a good performance. It was really good. Like physically, you could uh, he was scary looking, he was. but um, I you know there, obviously there's things he needs to work on. He's still learning, but at the same time, it's like. I tr I love that he's you could tell he's putting the work in like in the, mm -hmm. in the entire movie he literally only has one line it's when he dies it's his last line it's when he says, last moment shit yeah. everything else he doesn't speak at all so he has to emote through the huge frame that he has mm -hmm. he does a solid enough job doing that he's in what I would say four sequences that I recall specifically yeah because he was in the the, the sequence where he's introduced at the table where he mm -hmm. kills the guy by poking his eyes out or yep. crushing his eyes in then he was in the snow sequence yep then he uh, he was in the car sequence the first. And yep. then he was in the snow sequence, and then, and then the train, the train sequence. And I, I say that specifically because like there was enough time for him to be in the film that you really could kind of get an opinion on him. Mm -hmm. And I thought when he was introduced, that was by far the best part of that scene. Even though you're supposed to focus on Christoph Waltz, I yeah. thought the pacing of that sequence was really slow. And where I'm supposed to feel tense, I felt bored. Yeah. Until he came in, yeah. and he kind of injected a little bit of energy, and then it just felt it just felt weird. It felt like it was supposed to be more. Um, threatening that scene than it really ended up being yeah. and I didn't like it but he saved it like it looked hella nice it was beautiful <laughs> it was beautifully shot but I'm just sitting there there are moments they're just sitting on random almost extras that are like part of the, the committee that he was in yeah but I didn't they really don't even care. sit at the table yeah. what lames like... and yeah or they're like the people who are sitting at the table just they just look frightened of, of Walt but I'm not really getting any reason why he yeah. just has like weird like he needs someone to move his microphone over like i don't know i just felt he was annoying and yeah. i didn't really feel the threat yeah but he was but batista was really good in that sequence i don't think he could have saved the car chase if he tried because i felt like that car chase why is the whole city abandoned I, why is it beautifully shot yeah you're just destroying a that car chasing car. did go like, on way too long yeah and it was like there were moments that were humorous but like i felt like mission impossible 5 did better humor in their chase sequences yeah which a lot of people are comparing the two in the tone spy of, on spy movies spy yeah. on spy but even like the syndicate versus specter like they're very similar i know mission impossible and the, their their source material they go back a while too but yeah i just felt like mission impossible 5 did so much better with the set pieces that Spectre just let fall apart. Yeah. And, but Batista in the train sequence was awesome. What was your favorite part overall? Like, of the movie? It, of the movie. I I definitely think the train sequence stands out because mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like anything else in the movie, which no. is kind of weird. But for me, anything past when... Um, uh, what's her name again? The actress, the blonde? Lisa Du. When she comes in, there's something about what happens in that last, I would say, last half of the second act into the third act yeah. that works for me. It may or may not be like a lasting relationship setting, but the yeah. their dynamic worked really well for me. Yeah. It was interesting because there's so many times that the Bond girls are very one dimensional, and to yeah. a certain extent, she kind of is. She almost was. Almost. And, and I got, I was starting to get angry when that happened. But I also didn't. I didn't want her to just be like, "Oh, she saves him," like in Mission Impossible Five, where that character does a. I mean, you can't. She was awesome. Like yeah. she saved Tom Cruise's ass like four times in that movie. Yeah. I didn't need that. I already had that with that movie. So yeah. if they're gonna half-ass that. I didn't want that either. Yeah. 
but she, she made something happen in that film where it clicked to a certain extent that made Daniel Craig seem like he cared a little bit more in mm-hmm. some of the set pieces. Yeah. I, I, there are always scenes that I like and they don't go far enough for me to like them a lot. Yeah. Like, I like that the, the bad guy's lair is in a crater. Like, that's such a 60s move. I love yeah. it. But the way they escape is horseshit. Like, Totally. I don't like, terrible. Like, oh, yeah. there's an explosion. We're going to fly uh, away. Like, there's just moments that I like that aren't complete. Yeah. But the train sequence is my favorite. Overall, uh, speaking of which, just to close that part of the argument up, what did you feel about Christoph Waltz's performance? I don't know if Or it's, character as a whole. I don't know if it's his fault, but I think how he works as an actor is when his humor terrifies you. Yeah. And he's not funny at all in this movie. No. I needed him to be Inglorious Bastards. I needed him to be, like... He needed to remind me that he had one up on something. Yeah. On someone. And he did in certain sequences. Yeah. But he didn't take joy in it. And that's what scares me about his characters is yeah. when he's enjoying the manipulation. It just... It was... The one thing is, yeah, I think the character, not so much the performance is what kind of... Not frustrated me, but kind of disappointed me. Yeah. It was because it's like, oh, he conveniently was a guy that was raised with James Bond. Like, and I saw oh. that coming the moment they showed the picture. And yeah. And it's a hole in the a, kid's oh, head. And I'm like, come, I'm like on. come on, dude. And then... You know, I thought, like, with the lines that he had, he was kind of intimidating. He right? was. And no, I was you... like, I was, I was like, all right, he did it. But, yeah, like, they didn't, they didn't develop in the right way, the the way he could have, mm-hmm. you know, there were a couple instances where he could have killed James Bond. And. Did not because he wanted to monologue. Which yeah, is he fine. wanted That's to monologue, which is way. old school. And I'm just like, ah, but has he's enough time passed for you to appreciate that. And I don't like that he hovered. In the final act, we won't give everything away, but he's hovering, waiting for James Bond to make a certain decision. Yeah. And I'm like, you could be just getting away, yeah. but instead you're not, and you're giving someone an, in, in an opportunity to catch you. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I, I just, I didn't, yeah, I agree. I didn't do that part. So obviously the least favorite parts of the movie were, I think all I've ever expressed them was the fact they chose to go in a different direction. Yeah, the tone but overall. The tone overall is just what I didn't necessarily care for. You know what? concerned me was within the first 10 minutes of the movie yeah the tracking shot at the the in mexico city i thought was really cool and i thought was was interesting and yeah there's there's enough reason to show it because they clearly shot there with all these extras like that was cool like i yeah. like that because mexico doesn't do anything else besides day of the day you know? <laughs> right yeah. i mean it's it's a compelling compelling visual yeah. element to the city i mean of course yeah. it's definitely it's, it is it is focusing on one out of 365 days but whatever yeah. um but, I mean, that's it's visually compelling, and it was interesting to see that's how they started the film. But by the time they get to that helicopter scene was when I realized, and you're right, that they for, that they rushed the, the post-production of this film. Because yeah. that sequence was edited, in my opinion, really poorly. It was terrible. And it was so long. And I'm yeah. like, there's no... And they chose to take some of the music out in moments. And I just listened to something NPR about the audio text in this yeah. film. And how they, they originally had a much, like... This random side note: yeah. a much like wimpier helicopter sound, yeah. which <laughs> actually Sam Mendes and the team that listened to it was like, "I'm, I don't. This it needs to be more like it needs to be a bigger sounding helicopter because it whoa, sounds whoa, like whoa, it's whoa, about whoa, to fall whoa, out of the whoa, sky." Whoa. I'm like, I would have liked that. Like yeah. if it sounded like this rickety, like last minute helicopter that they found, I would have. I thought that would have added a little more tension. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here being like. It's James Bond. It's ten minutes in the movie. Clearly, yeah. he's not gonna die. Like it was, yeah. especially when he gets hurt in the beginning of, of Skyfall. Like we already saw the stakes high in that film. Mm-hmm. We saw him be vulnerable. Like they're not gonna do that again. No. So he just seemed. He seemed like I don't know. It just seemed like he was never gonna get hurt, and I didn't care. I was actually more concerned about the people below. I'm like, you're gonna crash a helicopter, and these people are gonna die on the day yeah. of the dead. I'm like, don't do that. I I but yeah. I hated that sequence. Uh, that was there was there were a lot of sequences. The only action sequence and sequence, in my opinion, that worked really well. Obviously, was the train scene. Yes, all absolutely. right, but like now to wrap up our argument, like all right, let's wrap up Spectre first. All uh-huh. right, would you recommend someone to see this? And is it a good movie or is it a bad movie? I would recommend if someone asked me, "Hey, do you did did you see Spectre? Would you see it, or would you should I see it?" I would definitely say yes, only because I'm kind of curious to see how they think of it because yeah. the the reaction online has been either they really liked it or they really didn't like it. Yeah, I kind of just want to see how my friends fall on either side. Yeah. Um, but what was your other question? Uh, and, um, um... Was it a good movie or a bad oh, movie? Oh, yeah, was it a good movie or a bad movie? Um, I think it's a, it's a bad, it's a, either a good movie made for the wrong, for the bad reasons of, like, just making a film, yeah. or it's a bad movie with good intentions of being shticky. So yeah. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's an interesting <laughs> way to know. put it. Okay. I don't know. I, for me, I... I would not recommend this movie. I would just recommend them. And I saw you not recommend it, actually. Yeah, someone so I, I did it because like, there was. Man of your word. 
I just, I just, it, for me, it just, I was like, ah, you know, I just, I feel like the audience is not going to get something that they haven't seen before. Yeah, fair enough. And that's not necessarily the only reason I would recommend a movie like that, because Jurassic World wasn't necessarily anything new either. Yeah, but we said But it was, high. it was mm -hmm. well done, at least for what it wanted to do. This one was kind of, you could tell it was just, let's collect our check and let's everybody just go home and yeah. go about our careers. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to recommend the film for everybody. Fair enough. I will say that it's... I will say it's a good film just because it's like it was they executed it they executed yeah. what the, what the effort they did it's like you know what it's a, it's a it's a good movie you know they had some yeah. decent parts but I still wouldn't recommend it to everybody um and yeah I just that's how I feel about it that being said oh mm -hmm. no go ahead you No I was going to say I my last thing is that I I want to watch it one more time to see if I thought the editing was as bad as I thought the first time through oh, I think I, that really is why the film doesn't work is that the pacing makes no sense No I just realized that There's like, a lot of dead air in that movie A lot of walking and like random shots of isos that we didn't need Sorry I just I realized that as we were, as you were closing up that yeah. it just I needed to say it or else it was going to bother me for What she's saying is a, she would not recommend it to anybody like, I would it's not have bad. edited that way Let's just say I would have edited the title you know <laughs> I think the I think the, also just with, goes without saying we did not like the Sam Smith song. No. I like I, this. That was the first time I heard it too. Right, with so, all the and visuals, it made of sense. course it's and good. And I was just yeah. like, I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, I can kind of. Uh, it's not that bad. But then you think back to Adele, and you're just like, she. That's she the best Bond it. song of all she time, in my opinion. It. Yeah. Um. But no, let's transition to now. <laughs> like now that Spectre's over, and now that uh, I think we're unanimous in thinking that James Bond and Sam Mendes are not coming back. Yeah. So now that means that we have well Daniel Craig. Um. That means that we are now. Looking for a new James Bond director uh, and predicting. actor. Let's predict. Now we're gonna predict now. Now we want like if you guys have ideas out there, please feel free to share them Absolutely. on Facebook or Twitter, or email if you even know it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exit at gmail .com. Um, <laughs> um, but yes, I want to start with you. I want to say okay. First, who would you pick as director? Okay. For the next James Bond franchise or next set of James Bond franchise for that specific actor and director, okay. mm -hmm. and who would be your actor? Okay. Um. Oh. <laughs> um, so we we go we were talking back and forth about this. So we, we don't necessarily know each other's, but we also know the ones we didn't pick. So there yes. are some honorable mentions. But mm -hmm. the director I'm most intrigued by seeing do something with this mm -hmm. particular source material. Yeah, it's Kenneth Branagh. See, I, that came across my radar too, but then I kept going. But go ahead. Go I ahead. I would say that, and and I I have a, a stipulation. There's an asterisk next to it. Mm. Is that it has to have Richard Deakins doing the cinematography. Mm. He has to come back. Because I thought Skyfall was gorgeous. But I think him him visually representing the stuff that Brennan can... The themes that I think he can express mm -hmm. with the actor I have in mind mm -hmm. could work out really well. Okay. And who is that actor? My actor would have been the villain in... Mo Nine times out of ten people would think he'd be the villain. Mm. I want to see him... As James Bond, it's Michael Fassbender. Ah, okay. That is my pick, and of course, yeah, it's a hot pick right now. And it's a hot pick, but my, I, I, like you, it, and that doesn't matter. The I thing is, is he right for the role? It does not matter. And I think the two of them are strong enough personalities that they would argue over the direction of it, and I would be intrigued to see what those arguments. End I would up like being. to see those two just together. <laughs> period. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have the yeah. Beh behind the scenes of this Bond film would probably be better than the film. Kenneth Branagh is a great actor's director, and they're both very Shakespearean, and those themes are universal. So yeah. I feel like it could be a really good. It's it's set. it would be an exciting pairing. I feel like visually, and I think from a story perspective, you could totally see, and that's what I liked about Skyfall the mm -hmm. most was that it was about James Bond trying to get back. You know, get his groove back, so to say, and how, yeah. what that do, what mentally he had to do to do that. And I think Kenneth Branagh would would be smart enough, being the great actor that he is. Like, you know what? That's what I want to highlight. It's the vulnerability of James Bond that, for twenty something films, we never saw, and we mm. saw with Skyfall, and then it went away with Spectre. And I would like them to bring it back. You could tell that was the best performance of Daniel Craig that we've seen in James Bond. Yeah. Like my favorite yeah. scene of the Skyfall was when he was being interrogated, and he looks like he's in control, and all of a sudden they're like. Skyfall, and then all of a sudden he gives he gives like this like this reaction, and you're just like, that's awesome. Yeah, his his that the is awesome. subtleties of his face, he he doesn't get to use them enough. Yeah. So I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see Fastbender do yeah. it. Just, I would like to. I, I, I like that, that one. <laughs> Mine is uh, I like director is completely really ambitious. Okay. Um, not necessarily because of 
you know, he'll do something drastically different. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just because he hasn't done anything like it yet. Okay. And my director pick would be Steve McQueen, director That's... of 12 Years a Slave, directed your, uh, obviously, your, your boy, guy, Michael yeah. Fassbender, and Shame, yep. and Hunger. Um, and 12 Years a Slave. Yeah, and I, I, <laughs> I think the reason I would want him as a director is because I think visually he's a, being a former photographer himself, yeah. he understands what... He adapts his style to fit the type of movie he's doing. And each frame is intentional. Every frame is intentional. Yeah. And he's really he's really ballsy with the kind of frames he does. Um, like I remember in Shame, there was a shot where uh, Michael Fassbender and uh, Carey Mulligan were, were talking with each other on the mm-hmm. couch, and we sh- he shot it from behind. And, it's, yeah, and we I never, remember that I show. remember they never went back to their face. Yeah. And I was just like, like you that's interesting. Like, yeah. yeah. And I, I thought, you know what? Bold choice. Even though it's not necessarily the most exciting shot in the world, I'm like, this guy's going to take chances. For it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Twelve Years of Say visually was very stunning. He's willing to hold shots that I yeah. don't think most directors are willing to do, and that's very Skyfall like. That very is very Skyfall, Skyfall like. So I feel like I'm, th- and that's kind of the tone that I want to go back to. Okay. I'm like Skyfall was very cool just because we got the character bond, necessarily the 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 myth bond, where it's just like yeah, shake and not stir it <laughs> right. or something like Which that. Which is why know? people hate Spectre yeah. because yeah. it's the complete opposite. It's yeah. complete opposite, yeah. but because you have Steve McQueen, you're gonna need a kind of actor that could kind of handle that kind of weight. Of that sure, kind of sure. style of character of James Bond, and obviously, you know, it, you, Are you going with the and I think <laughs> the, uh, I'm going to go with the pop, the most popular pick. It's Idris Elba, it, and the as reason it should be I as it should be <laughs> because like it's one of those things where like take the skin color away. Okay, who's charismatic, mm-hmm. tough, mm-hmm. and that when you see him, ladies want to do him. And he has the acting that, chops like, to match. Too. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like you, like if you list those qualities, you're like oh, cast him already. But the biggest reason there's the controversy because he's black. There's never been a black Bond. Well, there's never a blonde Bond either, so... That's true. I mean, so it's literally superficial. That's it's very... It so, in my, in my opinion, I think, we're, you know, at least here in America, I don't know how it is in Great Britain, true. but I, at the same time, because this is their darling, like you said, like, I'm like, we want to see him. Yeah. Like, we pay to see the movie, too. Like, you know what? I, I know you want to pay... And, like, the thing is, the guy's a Brit, too. Like, Idris Elba is a... Brit. So you'd have the the weight of his voice yeah. and things like that. You have two culture. Brits, two guys that understand the, the, the those style of film mm-hmm. and that style of culture that you could sit there and say, you know what, I want to see a Bond film. Like personally, I think the coolest Bond film that I've always wanted to see, regardless of who it is, was the recruitment of James Bond. I've always wanted to see that because we always see Bond as all right, he's James Bond, and he's out in his thing. Casino Royale was the closest to that because he just became James Bond sure. and he was reckless and all this stuff. Like, even though Idris Elba's up there in age, I think it would be very exciting to say, hey, we'd like to recruit you to be James Bond. And I'm like, I want to see, okay, I want to see, and then, like, we could kind of go into that, like, whole little, I think I just think that's a very intriguing thought, and I'm like, I would love to see that. Okay, I see, that. I, and not to open a can of worms, I disagree, <sighs> because, and it's the same reason why you don't want to see a Boba Fett I know. origin story. I know. No, it's no, because no. I don't need it. I don't need it. The reason why James Bond's so good is that there's an, an there's he's anonymous. He's not supposed and the closest they get is to some of the stories they tell you in yeah. the previous two films, but I don't necessarily want to see the recruiting process. Yeah. I don't need to be pulled behind that curtain. And it's the same reason because yeah. of both, but I don't need it. I just there's a lot I don't of know. I don't no, know. no, 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 that's completely yeah, yeah. fine. I think it's you're right. It's just interesting to me that you would Considering how aggressively against a Boba Fett origin story. That's a good point. You are. That's a good point. I just I feel like because I feel like the big difference for me is because we've heard James Bond speak. We've heard James Bond in different situations. And I'm just like, okay, you What's know, I feel next? like, yeah, I feel yeah. like we've warped enough around where I'm like, we've never really got that other story that we're, because we've gotten plenty of situations sure. with him with that. The reason I say Boba Fett doesn't need one is because there's literally nothing we really know about it aside from the fact that he's Jango Fett's son. Yeah, you're like, you give me a blank canvas and you're going to tell like, me that and I'm story. Like, <laughs> and I'm just like, you know what? I like that we don't really know it. Let's, yeah. let's take a different approach. Sure. But um, there's plenty of stories you could go, especially since, like with his age. It's like, I, you know, you could go the route of very similar to Skyfall. It's like, let's say this guy was retired for so long, and they're like, dude, you know, we kind of want you back. We've always wanted you for James Bond, but, you know, I think this is the perfect time for it. He's like, nah, man, like, mm-hmm. I'm old and all this stuff. They could kind of play on that. And it's just, could, yeah. all of a sudden he comes out and it's like, like, you're the Bond that no one's expecting, and kind of playing on the whole of him being black. I think that'd be really, I think that'd be very interesting. Yeah. Um, but I think you marry these two guys, Steve McQueen, Idris Elba, like I think that's a very exciting style that I think would be really refreshing. Even if it's only for one film, I don't care. It's fine. Yeah. I don't care. I'm you like don't I just want to be see. Doing the whole yeah, I'm like I just want to see something cool. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what James Bond is. We want to see something cool and different, and that's what we want to see. I think yeah. I think both choices are. I think your your actor may be a little more mainstream than mine, but I feel like that director you? could be. 
I'm the well, exact opposite. Neither of them have the music recognition <laughs> no, yeah. that you would expect True. either. So like they're they're crowd favorites in certain circles, but yeah. I think there would be risks either way. Mm-hmm. And I think they're compelling. Yeah, they're not so big. Yeah, like you said, yeah. <laughs> they're not big enough, but hey, you know, if the demand is there. Daniel Craig wasn't huge either, so. And not at all. No. He was a stage he guy. He was a bit of an X factor. Yeah, man. Like holy crap. So. And like but that those are our picks. And we're excited. Obviously, we're always going to be James Bond fans. But we'd like them to go back to a very Skyfallish kind of tone because uh, yep. it's an adult movie. We don't care about PG-13 crap. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I can see the problems people have with Spectre. I, if anyone wants to see it again, I will go mostly because I want to see if I need to tear apart the editing more than I did. So If you guys want to go and they're playing the Star Wars trailer, I'll go. Then there I'll leave go. after the Star Wars trailer. There you go. There were like 18 minutes of trailers when we went the first time. Yeah. yeah. Usually I don't mind, but I'm already watching them at home. So I'm like, come on, just oh, keep gosh, going. <laughs> Yeah, but no, that's all that we're going to talk about today. It was just a James Bond-centered show. Yep. I may be gone for the next few weeks. He might be, But yes. I'm going to leave the show in the great hands of J.P. Lee. And I'm, I am going home for Thanksgiving, but my father's a big movie buff. So I would I love to hear that. Yeah. To do an episode. Yes, so recruiting. I'll bring the crew. I'll bring all the equipment. Mr. Payeres, <laughs> we want to hear you on the show. He's immediately going to call me. We need, need a grizzlier <laughs> voice. <laughs> Welcome to the Exotic Theater Podcast. The reason why I love movies is because my parents, you know, kind of drag me through. That's them, what so I want to hear. A nostalgia cool. show. A, th- a family that Thanksgiving be, giving program. If we like, talk about like planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah. Like, movies that matter to There's us. literally anything. I'm There's down. There's a segment right there. Parents of Jennifer <laughs> Fisher. Please do the show. Let's do it. You guys combined are way better than I will ever be <laughs> alone. Not true, but... Still, I think I think it would be really good. Yes. I think it'd be really compelling. Maybe I'll get my brother in on it, too. Dude, get everybody on he it. He likes Transformers more than you do, though, so I don't know. Take it back. <laughs> You're like, not nope, allowed on the nope. show. On that note, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, we might not talk to you guys until December. We might. Might. So if not, enjoy your Thanksgiving breaks. Yeah. Please you go watch enjoy, movies. You enjoy Mexico. Let us know what you think. Please watch the blog. We'll be blogging about movies yes, if anything. Yes, exactly. We'll be I will be out of the country and hopefully maybe in a different job when I return. Uh-huh. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> in that notion, note, so. we'll leave you all with <laughs> nothing. On that note, we will see you guys in a couple weeks. Yo! For, uh, for exit I don't know why I said yo. For Exit Only Theater, <laughs> I'm going This is Adrian Elder. Before we say anything else stupid, we'll see you when the credits roll. Blah! <laughs> no, we still managed to say this. <laughs> <laughs>